Well, hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to sunny and, uh, well, warm Northern California. It's early February. Computer says it is 66 degrees. Beautiful day. A little hazy, but not a cloud in the sky. Great weather for cycling. So, this episode of my video series on the PVP After Party features a rider from Florida, Ian Singer, rode his first PBP last year in 2019, put in a great time, under 80 hours, and uh, he's here to tell you about his experience, high and low points, his advice as, as a first time rider, and uh, I will let him take it over from here. We'll be on Skype in a moment, but first... Let's go ahead and enter the party. Here we go. So, Ian Singer, welcome to the PBP After Party. How are you today? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. So, you're in Florida. Uh, I'm here in California, so it's about 3 o'clock here, so about 6 o'clock there. Um, and uh, Ian volunteered to be part of the after party and tell us about your experiences. So you are a first time PVP participant this year or last year? Uh, yes, I am a first time PVP participant. And I would like to say that everything went smoothly and I had a really good time. Okay. Well, so how long have you been doing cycling in general and and randonneuring well i'm coming up on uh six years of being on the bike uh -huh. and uh randonneuring i began at the very end of my first year so. okay so you've been done for about five years so that would have so you decided not to do it in 2015 but you were there this this time yes okay so what, uh, was that something you'd always been looking forward to, uh, to do PVP or how did, how did you make the decision to go ahead and go over there? I worked my way up. I actually did a series, I actually successfully did a series in 2015, but okay. uh, I just wasn't out ready for, for going international. Yeah. So you went ahead and went over there this time. Um, well, well tell me about the, so you're in Florida, um, I'm just trying to think about the, the kind of qualifying rides that you did. So did you do all your qualifying rides in Florida? Yes, I did. So when you got to Paris, or, and, and when you got to France then, um, a little hillier, I would imagine, than Florida. So how did you feel in terms of preparation when you got over there? I felt prepared. I mean, and I knew it was going to be different, but it, it didn't seem like it was that hard. <laughs> Well, it is a hard ride, so I mean, hats off to you if it if it wasn't that that difficult. Um, I know you you did a, a write up of this, which I've been reading, and you mentioned one of the things that was maybe more difficult was the temperatures, because it got rather cold in the evenings. Um, do you get that kind of temperature in Florida? I would just imagine. Well, this weekend it's going to be in the fifties. Not cold, but like chilly for us. Yeah. But you were prepared in terms of clothing and and getting ready for the yeah okay so what was your uh, what was your, which uh, start time were you in and and what was your total finishing time I was in the ninety hour group um, I started at uh, five thirty in the afternoon on Sunday the eighteenth and then what was your total time for finishing um. It was uh, seventy-eight hours and forty-two minutes. Excellent. So you could have been in you could have been in the um, in the eighty-four hour group and would have plenty of time. Yeah, <laughs> my reasons for going with the with the ninety hours was because it was my first time in France and I didn't know what to expect. Uh, in twenty twenty-three, I am going to go for the eighty-four hour. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you were doing your qualifiers, um, I, I know here in California, there's a you know, a fairly large group of randonneurs, and there's a lot of people that you can talk to who've been there before. Is there that kind of support in Florida? Did, did you have 
other people who've been there before to give you some tips and and help you through the I preparation? Did have, I did have some other people, but um, not really anybody that I would recognize. Did, did you by any chance watch uh, any of my videos? I watched all 36 of them. <laughs> I'd like to say, Eric, those 36 videos helped prepare me. For the Excellent. Ride. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That, that, was the, that was the entire purpose behind doing those. So high points, low points, what was your, what was your lowest point on the ride? Did, did you have any moments where you're really like, you know, what, am, what the heck am I doing here? Lowest point of the ride, I think, was the first night. Trying to get, you know, through night one into Monday, do car hay, mm -hmm. was difficult. Mm -hmm. And I started really falling apart about 10 a.m. Monday morning. I ate and drank, and that's how I stayed awake. Finally, in car hay, my first overnight at around 7.45. So you rode for 26 hours before you slept then. So if you started at 5.30 Sunday, so you rode through the whole night and the next day, and then you slept Monday night? Yeah. And Tuesday, I started around 3.30 in the morning. Okay. A little chilly, but you know, I had all the clothing and it yeah. was nice. Brest was nice. It was always, it's always great to get to Brest. Yeah, when you see the bridge and and then you know that basically you're just riding back now. You've, you've gone there and now you're just riding back and you got more time on the, on the return uh, to hit all the controls. Well, I guess a question for you in terms of, so you, you rode for 26 hours and, and then slept. When you go back, um, if you do the 84 hour group, I mean, assuming you have the same amount of time, you know, or you're riding about as fast as you were this time, you've got some maybe additional sleep. Would you have slept maybe sometime between Sunday and Monday night, like taking a nap or something? Uh, probably not. Okay. Uh, the whole thing was to manage my time wisely. And right. I think it successfully did. Everybody's different in how well you react to, you know, getting sleep or, or not. So, um, yeah, if you're one of the lucky people who can go a long time without sleep. I did my first PVP in 2007, finished in 82 and a half hours, and I only got about um, four or five hours of sleep the entire time. An experience I don't want to repeat again. So we talked about a low point. Uh, what do you think was a high point for you on the ride? Any any particularly memorable things? The high part was seeing the countryside. And, you know, the weather was very nice once it warmed up. Right. The chilly start. France is just beautiful. And I mean, people were nice. Lots of support. Yeah. Did you have a chance to stop at any of the little roadside things where people were giving out food and drinks? I stopped at a lot of them. Okay. Oh, yeah, because that, that's what makes PVP what it is. You can ride a, you know, a 1200K well, you know, all over the place. You can ride a bunch of them in, in the US, but you're not going to get that kind of support. You're not going to find people out in you know, Montana at two o'clock in the morning with coffee for you and that that's one of the things that's so great about the ride so what uh what tips would you have for somebody who's doing pbp for the first time All right so you saw my videos but then you experienced it so what, what do you think are the most important things use your time wisely because right. if you're not a fast rider you're going to fall behind now were you riding with a group did you have other riders around um, you um mostly on my own after okay i mean i See groups come and go, but I was mostly on my own. Okay. Yeah. It's the it's the first time, you know. You know, you want to take it at your own pace. You don't want to go out too hard, too slow, or anything like that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you rode very, very intelligently, which is good. A lot of people will get really psyched up, and like you say, go out too fast, and and then end up burning out. And I'm glad you found it not, not that difficult because it is rather hilly and it seemed harder this time <laughs> for me than I remember it being in, in the past, but that, that's just me. There, so aside from just uh, watching your time, any, anything else that, that really sticks out as something you'd tell other riders to do? Know what you like to eat. 
Right. Now, did you get food at the controls, or did you go other sometimes, places? Sometimes I did stop at these little cafes and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I did get I did get some food at the controls, but mostly I went outside. What kinds of things did you eat? But what do you like to eat on a ride? Croissant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of those right. there. Yeah, yeah. And if you can find the uh, the bakery in the village when they open up. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to stop at one when they're first opening up in the morning and, and everything is fresh out of the oven. It's just fantastic. So that's always one thing I look forward to. The, the best pastries here are like mediocre pastries in France. Um, so I did find that, you know, the breakfast was very limited. I mean, it's not like breakfast here where you can get your egg sandwich or anything like that. I didn't really find any egg sandwiches in France. No. They, they don't believe in that kind of stuff. If you can find a McDonald's, they'll have it. They've got the same stuff at McDonald's. The, uh, just a quick story, the first restaurant I ever ate at in France was McDonald's. And we, <laughs> we, we got to the hotel, in, and this is when it was in saint Catan. Got to the hotel, it was a Sunday, it was some kind of a national holiday. Everything was closed except McDonald's. So, and I just had to eat, so that was the first meal I had in, in France was at, at a McDonald's. You know what I liked about this PvP? What's that? Absolutely no rain whatsoever. It's clear every day. Well, and that's fantastic because uh, that was one thing I was hoping for this year. As you, as you may know, I, I didn't finish, but I was really looking forward to not getting rained on. So you got very lucky. I've been trying for 12 years to do a PvP without rain, and it happened this year, but I, I didn't finish the ride. So. So you got very lucky. But, but you can look forward to that. So in 2023, maybe you'll get some rain. You'll get the full experience. <laughs> so you'll, you, you'll get the drenching, the cold, the wet, the, the smell when you're wet for several days. You get all that experience. You missed out on all that. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you wanted to say um, before we end this se session of the uh, after party? I have to say that... Um... In preparation for PvP, don't think that you can just do this thing cold turkey because it, it, it takes a lot of work, a lot of preparation, and a lot of commitment. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, Ian, I wish you the, wish you the best for your riding between now and 2023. Uh, I haven't decided whether I'll be back, but um, if I am, I hope we run into each other over there. <laughs> So, again, thank you for, for doing this. Thank you for taking part, and best wishes. And to all of you out there, hope you enjoyed this edition of The After Party. So it's obvious from talking to Ian that he planned his ride out very carefully. He was prepared for anything. It did not rain, but we had rain gear ready to go. Uh, he rode all his brevets in a fairly flat place, Florida, but he was ready for the hills said they were no big deal and hats off to him for for saying that because they were a little bit bigger deal than me anyway so I think Ian's experience is a good example of someone who planned ahead trained prepared himself picked his moment and had a great ride he says he'll definitely be back in 2023 and uh, if I am there I certainly look forward to meeting him Anyway, thank you for watching my channel. If you like these videos, go ahead and hit the like button. That helps YouTube show them to other viewers who might be interested. And if you want to hear about future videos, hit that subscribe button down there. Thanks again. See you next time here on my channel and the next episode of the PvP After Party. Bye.